Hey there, everyone. That sexy nerd is back again. And, uh, just Nostalgia Critic, man. He, he keeps on getting me in the emotional feels. Now we got Road to El Dorado. I used to watch this so much when I was a kid. I used to love it. And, uh, mm, there was also a certain reason, a certain character in there that kind of got me going like Butters from South Park. The movie was always pretty good. I, I wish it was better, or I wish there was more to it. Even with John Williams, not John Williams, Elton John, uh, uh, doing the, the soundtrack. And, you know, I mean, Lion King was my end-all, be-all when I was a kid. Lion King was my favorite Disney movie. It still is. It still is my favorite Disney movie of all time. Second is Fox and the Hound. And you, uh, some of you know why. <laughs> but anyway, uh... Yeah, look at that. We're, we're talking about DreamWorks movies and, and we're talking about, now we're talking about Disney. Katzenberg will be pissed. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't seen, I honestly haven't seen this movie in a very long time. And I've always been intrigued by it because I remember the, the guys were Spain, Spanish. Like they come from Spain. And, and actually, that's where some of my, my family comes from. Some of my family is actually still there. So they, uh, some, some, most of the others are Latino. So, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, it, it kind of made me interested. It was during the Conquistador days, so. Yeah, the, the characters always, uh, the, the, it's still an interesting movie. You know, the, uh, you know, and the characters, like, you know, I, I think it was the first time I've seen, uh, a movie where the main characters were not great people. Because they tricked an entire civilization into believing that they're gods just because they're white. So, I mean, and that's a whole other kettle of beans right now. But, but yeah, I mean, but yeah, I really want to see what Nostalgia Critic thinks. So why don't we just get into the episode? And remember, please smash that like button if you want to see more sexy and nerdy content and subscribe if you think I deserve it. And let's do this thing, y'all. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy. Remember it so you don't have to. For a while, I've had people asking me to review the movie Road to El Dorado. The issue is the movie's gotten quite the following over the years. Really? And while I can't say I dislike it, I can't say I really enjoy it that much either. Yeah. So I'm going to stay away from it for a little Come bit. Come on, Mr. McCritic, give it a chance. Chester, you're a fan of this movie? Hell yeah, it's the greatest movie I've ever seen in none of my life. Are you okay? You almost sound drunk. More than usual. Yeah, well, you should shut up. I mean, ooh, it's the warm weather that apparently no scientist can explain. Who knew a bum couldn't do put any effort into his appearance? Uh, maybe somebody else would like to see you review the movie. Oh, uh -huh. what? hey, critic. Aunt Despair? You're hanging out with Chester? Yeah, we Since got along what? great after episode 361 where we reviewed Home Alone 2 together. I mean, whatever episode that was. Do, do you remember, Chester? Uh. I don't even I think they were reviewed Let's that movie. Let's bring in someone else together. who wants to see you review this movie. Come on in, chart guy. Charts, charts, etc. <laughs> okay, what's going on here? None of you are teamed up with who you're usually teamed up with. Gobbledy shit, Mr. McCritic! And you sound like a constipated George C. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that's uh that's devil boner. I think the jig's up. Fine, drop the act. Yeah, <gasps> Hyper fan girl. Devil boner. Devil boner. It's still chart guy. Oh, oh him. Benny! Benny, I forgot about I Benny! I look like, because for a second, I thought that meant I was racist. I think oh. it still does. Regardless, oh, we're what? here to make sure you review Road to El Dorado. Um, also, you don't... Uh, well, to be fair, it's not really racist, because he didn't do his hair like Benny does. He had his hair cut. That's not fair. That's cheating. Why? Because, like you said, it has a fan base, and all of us are super into it. Uh, I mean, look at this movie. How can you say no to it? Wait a minute. What? You Different, three aren't it? the only one in disguise. What are you talking about? <gasps> Aha! This what? is actually a Road 2 movie! <gasps> what is that? Yeah, like Fury Road or... No, those old Bob Hope movies. With Bing Crosby. Family Guy did parodies of them. Yeah, exactly! What the hell? In that parody, I'm starting to forget. Yeah, in another mm. week, I'm gonna have no memory of that. You gotta okay. make room in the vault. Yeah. Okay, mm. maybe this film's worth talking about just for the history. Well, Alright. I do like this movie a lot. 
It's color. Where DreamWorks Animation certainly has more of an identity now, with most of the films sticking pretty close to the Shrek design. In mm -hmm. the early days, they were still testing the water. Yeah. The hand-drawn prints of Egypt seemed to do well, as did the CGI film Ants. That's what I forgot to mention. This was like, I remember I was super excited for this movie and thought it was going to be like the next Prince of Egypt or something or something just grand and epic in scale. And that's, I, I think that was why I, I don't have as much as a like for it as I do Prince of Egypt. Because Prince of Egypt, I'll watch like every once in a while. I even watch the damn clips on YouTube, like an unhealthy amount of times. And the same could be said for their stop motion film, Chicken Run. So in 2000, when their next hand-drawn film was said to be inspired by a film series 60 years old, people were... confused. The Road 2 movies usually broke the fourth wall, upset the status quo, and led to a lot of zany antics and one-liners. <laughs> they were weird. Think of more laid-back Marx Brothers. The series showed live-action people trying to be cartoons, so logically, having the same premise be a cartoon would make sense. There was a problem, though. They didn't move like cartoons, they moved more like real people. Huh. Which seems like a step backwards for an animated comedy. Part of the reason for this is the film bizarrely changed gears in development when Katzenberg demanded he wanted to be an adult PG-13 drama. After Prince of Egypt seemed so heavy though, he changed it to a comedy. Then after he realized they'd be missing out on the kid market, they toned it down to a family-friendly PG. No wonder it didn't got come so out. fed up with the tone right. changes, they ended up leaving the film and declared it El Dorado, the city on hold. The public had a similar reaction. It got underwhelming reviews and an underwhelming box office, mm. but like I said, it got a bit of a following over time. In some ways, it's not hard to see why. It it's is. a gorgeous movie a with catchy movie. songs and an occasional laugh. Truth be told, if I grew up with this, I think I would have a soft spot for it too. Yeah. But those production problems do clearly hold it back from its full potential. However, does not living up to its full potential still mean it's giving just enough potential? Well, we're going to take a closer look. All right, but God help you if you're too tough on this movie. Us animation fans can be quite tough. <laughs> you ever feel like we should say no to her missions? Yeah, but then she does the pouty face, and I'm like, how can I say no to that? <laughs> Let's take a look at Road to El Dorado. Yay! Open on a credit sequence that has no credits. Funny, looks like the perfect spot to place them. And we're introduced you to our main characters, a pair of con artists named Tulio and Miguel, played by Kevin Klein and Kenneth Branagh. Partner! That's weird. <laughs> Together at last. Gay. <laughs> yeah, let's get that out of the way. These two are totally a couple. They went to Get out of here! Way too well into the Siegfried and Roy costumes. Not at the face. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Paul Lynn is like, there's being into each other than there's being into each other. <laughs> Funny enough, I do think they'd have more chemistry if they were a couple, but in 2000, they're just cousins. Oh. No, I'm the yes. Take a look in the mirror, pal. A little mincing would be nice. Okay, That's they're technically just friends. Kind they are. They just went to whoever they can to get by. I never got that. Where the hell? Why is everybody coming up and saying that these people were gay? Can people just be friends? I had a I had a best friend that I was uh, that I went everywhere with. We weren't gay. Well, why is it everybody thinks that uh, just because two guys are hanging out all the time? Why? I mean. It doesn't make you gay if you adopt the same mannerisms of the person you're constantly hanging out with. That's literally what you do with your freaking parents. Are, are we gay to, to, to follow our parents? God, I nearly lost my mind there for a second. Gambling for a stranger's map to the city of El Dorado. It's not my real. Map against your cash. Uh, Alright, because I already know I'm going to piss off a lot of people with this review. I might as well start a burn him with fire hot take count. Number one, I don't like Miguel's design. What? Tulio's not bad. He's got a bit of an Aladdin if he was in Prince of Egypt vibe. You can mm. see him being charming and funny. But Miguel... Miguel's you can do weird, a drawing yeah. that's totally fine, but then you keep adding details and it kind of ruins it. That's Miguel's face to me. You can tell he's supposed to be good looking, but there's just too much going on and I don't <laughs> like looking at it. This shot of him looking right at the camera is one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever seen. <laughs> take Richard Branson if he was intentionally trying to scare you. I don't care if he started a meme. Okay, that is still pretty funny, but I don't know. Maybe it's a personal preference. Y'all gonna hate me for anything bad I say about this movie anyway, so burn that bridge! Yeah, Your right. dice are loaded! Tulio and Miguel get the map, but the people discover they've been cheated, so the two of them make a run for it. Yeah, Doug, you're kind of full of shit there. Yeah, I'll... Run! <laughs> Miguel! Okay, hot take number two. The animation is gorgeous, but it's not funny. 
It's interesting because I've talked about how sometimes that zigzaggy, <laughs> hyper fast animation can be too much if there isn't enough variation in some anime or comedies. Surprisingly, this is the opposite. Really? Everybody moves too slow or, ironically, too human. Also, are you hating on Turning Red? You liked that movie. <laughs> I get the feeling the move they were going for was something like Princess Bride or hmm. like what it was originally based on, the Road 2 movies. Something that's shot in real life but has cartoony elements. Well, what made those work is that they were shot in real life, so when they did do something cartoony, it exaggerates the comedy. For some reason, this movie thinks the reverse will work. It's already a cartoon, so having them move more realistically will be funny? Hmm. Maybe once in a while to emphasize the size or surrealness of something that can work, but Honestly, because it's already a cartoon, it needs to move zany. You're right. Okay. All right, I'll agree with that. Across the Spider-Verse is funny not because they move realistically, even though they do a good chunk of the time, but because in the humorous moments, they move in a fast, exaggerated way. Where That's what he... That is perfect, actually. I was just literally thinking that in my mind. Not used to. It keeps us on our toes and the energy high. I really feel like these scenes would get a bigger laugh if they moved like Hotel Transylvania, with the movements enhancing the energy rather than limiting it. Yeah. Otherwise, you pretty you much remake get the this awkward movie. slapstick from Prince of Egypt. But instead of just lasting 10 minutes, it lasts the, the whole, whole movie. movie. With that said, there are still a few chuckles from yes. time to time. Oh, what's happening here? We're both in barrels. That's the extent of my knowledge. We are now in the DreamWorks logo. Thank God it is boss babyless. Oh, <laughs> It turns out they're accidentally thrown onto the ship of Hernan Cortez, who surprisingly oh. plays a small role given his Jesus Christ history. Yeah. What? I didn't realize that it was... See, I haven't seen this movie in so long. I love the Conquistador thing because it shows how messed up these people were, the Spanish were. And yes, I am Spanish, but they basically all moved to Puerto Rico after the Conquistador days, so... Got no responsibility for it. And he sentences them to slavery. You will be flogged. And when we put into Cuba, you will be flogged some more. All right. That is the face of someone who's been flogged before. Come on, movie. You know what you're doing with these two. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Find a Damn it. They use the horse on the ship to help them break out. He can't understand pride bar. Oh, yes, he can. Just say it's like pride barring you away from his ass. If you thought there'd be any less than five of these jokes in this review, you seriously underestimate my maturity. And they okay. <laughs> I can see why you thought it. I, I, this was so dark. Damn. I guess I could comment on how that's probably a nod to Spielberg. But yeah. I'm more fascinated they actually gave that seagull a bunghole. Maybe that was their nod to Katzenberg. <laughs> they make it to an island and they help us together. This is probably the island that holds the city of El Dorado. We're not even an island. That trail that we blaze. It's a rock. You know, I'll be honest. I want to laugh at this. The setups are there. The animation's pretty. I want to enjoy a good punchline. But these are like if the jokes from Frasier were removed and all we got were the characters rolling their eyes. I want to laugh at whatever they're rolling their eyes at, but all I get is the oh you face. <laughs> I could tell you how to make that scene funny. At least now. Oh my god, a giant rock. It's a rock and it's giant. There. Happy? Hit a theme. On the trail we play. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the song John. by Elton John and Tim Rice. Which brings me to my third hot take. Oh, don't okay, you? It's actually pro this movie. Okay. I actually like these songs more than Lion King. <laughs> I mentioned before, aside from Circle of Life, it's oh, you Harry, son of a bitch! Songs from that movie a little bland and even a touch annoying. These songs, though, are real toe tappers. Almost all of them I hum immediately after hearing, and they match the movie's tone and atmosphere no! very well. Changing legend into fact, we shall ride into history. I'm not sure why they didn't have the main characters sing the songs. Don't agree. Now, because they can't sing. It definitely sounds like these two, and all you'd have to do is move their mouths, and I believe they were singing. Maybe they saw Phil Collins win an Oscar for Tarzan and said, Hey, we can try less to win awards, too. Burn, baby, burn. Wow, the oh. evidence is really piling up. <laughs> Ooh, I, know I already King. mentioned this like a million times, but 
Christ, the animation is beautiful. It is. Look at how seamlessly the CG blends with the hand-drawn animation. Even when it's done well, it usually sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Like this. this is masterfully is. blended with some phenomenally vibrant colors. It's, it's, this came out 23 years ago, and admit it, it looks like a movie that was animated today. Not really. That is quite an accomplishment. I wouldn't say that. Oh, well, there she is. A thief named Chell, played by Rosie Perez. Being really? chased by locals. We're tourists. Tourists. May we go now? <laughs> no wonder I was so attracted to her. Rosie Perez used to be kind of hot. And her voice is still kind of hot. I mean, it just sounds like the girls that I grew up with, so... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Spears. <sighs> see, that's what I'm talking about. That isn't funny, but... Can't you see it being funny? <laughs> If there was like 20 spears that came in 10 times faster and he was completely still, except maybe his eyes and mouth moving, that would work. That'd get a laugh. Okay. This movie is trying so hard to look like an animated epic when really it just needs to try harder to be a funny cartoon. They put too much you know effort in one thing. those videos you see on YouTube where they take a scene from something animated and reanimated? I want the budget of this movie given to these people to rework these scenes. I was just seeing that. On that note, when they are taken to El Dorado, scenes, <laughs> I forgot that the horses. <laughs> note, they are taken to El Dorado, which no surprise is. I always love that horse. The film does get a little better. The epic size of the animation pays off, mm. and truth be told, Chell adds a lot to the trio. The, the gods sent me a vision to bring them tribute from the temple to guide them here. <laughs> which brings me to hot take number four. I think Cho should have been the main character. Why not? She so easily could have been a restless princess defying her parents like a lot of animated ladies, but not only did DreamWorks surprisingly not do that in their hand-drawn films, Ooh. CG on the other hand, <laughs> but Chell is legit pretty funny, and her expressions are allowed to go off model a bit for comedy. <laughs> Tulio and Miguel seem held back by their designs for some reason, but Chell gets some really funny reactions. Be gone! <laughs> oh, sh Are you serious? Do you mind? No. Oh, like hey. you don't want to go to Spain. Oh, like you don't want me to want to go to Spain. You see why? You see why? She's really hot. I think if the story was about her as a thief in El Dorado, which is already pretty funny, stealing the city made of gold, as she stumbles across these con men she decides to con with, maybe even conning them over, that would have been an interesting spin. Okay. Instead, we get the thing where the natives think they're gods and she stays the comic relief to what are pretty much already comic relief. Mm. We shall have to unleash our terrible power and you don't want that. Of course we do! Amanda Sante mm. plays the high priest. Who's a decent villain? I wanted a better story. Amo yes. He has great design, Amanda great Sante? expressions, a great actor, but he just does exactly what Nothing. you would think a character like this would do. He wants power, thinks they're gods, finds out they're not gods, and then tries to kill them. Nothing. I feel like that's most of the movie. People doing exactly what you would think they would do with the jokes you think they would tell. With that said, Chill does put together they're not gods and decides to keep their secret if they include her on their rise to power. Think you're the only ones who dream of better things? Of adventure? You've got your reasons, and I've got mine. Let's drop Ooh. it just as quickly as the movie does. No, really, we never do come back to this. Do you mind? Bye. <laughs> Only he can see me naked. As I practice on my pants what I will do to him tonight. Damn, PG movie! I don't know how you sum that up in your rating description, but something deserves to be on there. It was an accident. I hardly think I'm qualified. Oh, so they do sing in this. Yeah. It keeps going back and forth between their like singing and some random Elton John tough guy is singing. Oh, God. This song's a jam. It's tough to be a god, but if you get the people's god. No, really, I apologize for the next five days you trying to battle this earworm out of your head. It's tough to be a god. Spread where mortals <laughs> have not gone. Count your blessings, they'll keep them sweet. That's how it comes. Oh, I forgot about Star Trek. I have to hum mm. this eight times in order to get that out of my head. <laughs> Duck tails. It's tough to be a oh god. god. Nope, didn't work. Tulio and Miguel demand a boat be made for them to ascend, which of course is code for escape with a bunch of their riches. Tulio and Miguel de Hey guys, look, it's Omek. <laughs> From Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> the choices are yours and yours alone.
Amanda Pope be made for them to ascend, which of course is code for escape with a bunch of their riches. Thus the chief, played by Edward James almost. Oh. Says they can make one in three days. Okay, that that that's another thing. Why is it that Edward James almost always has to play something somebody who's overly Latino? Like overly Except that I think the only movie that he's not played somebody who's overly Latino is uh, the one where he's the teacher. I think it was... Uh, I can't remember. Is, Stan, is it Stand and Deliver? I don't remember. We just have to lie low. Tulio, this place is amazing. I mean, I wonder what's... No. Wow, we just had a record scratch, folks. Mm. Okay, this wasn't quite the death to comedy that is now, but in 2000... This was the somebody stuttering over a big moment scene. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, oh did you want to? Sorry. I'll let you. I'll let you. Next time. It's on its way out. Hey, uh, stand back. Anyone who disobeys your orders must be punished as you ordered when you were drunk. Oh, yes. That does sound like drunk me. <laughs> Miguel walks around El Dorado and finds himself enjoying the place and its strangely cross-eyed children. And he learns not to be so bossy. The more I learn. Actually, yeah, why couldn't he have sung this song? Oh, what an amazing arc I'm going through. Me, the red one, <laughs> totally different from the blue one. Like, I'm dumb. Oh, actually, he can be pretty dumb. I'm egocentric. Oh, he's pretty egocentric. Mm. I'm silly. I do not know the difference between these two. I'm sure What's there's the point? some if I go digging really deep, but if you were to give me any of their lines written down, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one said it. I could. The big difference is totally this one. with Shell. That's Wait, the what? scene. What's he gonna think if he finds one of the gods like this with me? Uh, like lucky, lucky god? Okay, now am I surprised they had this in an animated family <laughs> film, but again, if you show these three, who do you think would be sleeping with who? Hold it. Yeah, aside from the occasional glance, these two have no chemistry. I guess you could argue that's kind of the point, like they say they just want it to be a physical thing, but they do go off with one another at the end. I do think I'm supposed to want to see them together. Once again, I buy Miguel's jealousy over him sleeping with her more, and you know exactly why. Mm -hmm. I'm showing much more cleavage than her. You're lost, Tulio. My blonde carpet would have rocked your world. Through a segue that's about as seamless as, oh, we rapping now? Oh, this boy. is how the gods should play ball. The two of them are dragged into a game they don't know how to play. Again, being animation, I was really hoping for some bed knobs and broomsticks mm. soccer game comedy, but mm, oh yeah, they're supposed to move realistic, so isn't this hilarious? Excuse me! Oh, oh. They kind of did that. That's a goal! What of it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh look, their hair is messy. <laughs> Movie, I want to like you. I want to like you. Why are you making it so hard? Oh, wait, I'm quoting Miguel's lines again. <laughs> well, they'll have to look deep inside themselves to find the strength they never knew they had. Or cheat. Don't they just cheat? We need a miracle. No, we need to cheat. Okay, I'll admit it. I like that through most of this movie, they get away at their schemes and don't learn much of a lesson. That's actually kind of refreshing. Hmm. There will be no sacrifices. <laughs> get out. When the high priest sees one of them Could've bleed, he puts together they're not gods and summons a supernatural creature to take them out. Could have sacrificed him. Miguel has second thoughts about leaving the city. If you wish to stay, you only need to say so. I have Where did to you get a cigar? We're, we're partners. And I don't know what their laws on partners are here, you know what I mean? My mistake. Tear is human. I like the chief puts together oh. they're not gods and is honestly still okay with them. For a liar reveal story, I am glad we don't get that pretentious third act of everybody sulking once the truth comes out. For as many tired tropes as this movie has, the amount it leaves out or even breaks does stop it from being annoying. It's hmm. just... dull. But at least it's not annoying, you know, it's still pretty dull. And yeah, no chemistry, right? No chemistry. She gives her a fucking flower and flies away and she's smiling. Oh boy, that must be... Something that is so bland and regard and and not uh and just there's no feeling there whatsoever, right, Doug? Jaguar. When this monster attacks, it looks cool, but there's not a ton of it. This thing clearly should have been the climax of the movie, but instead, it's only on for a minute and a half. I want more of this thing. To its credit, though, it does lead to maybe the biggest laugh. Yeah. You are not God. 
You're, You're not, not a, a god? god. <laughs> that is legitimately hilarious. <laughs> it turns out this is all a trick on the villain, though, which softens the joke, but screw it. I'll take the laughs I can oh, get. Fuck off. And they knock him into the whirlpool, dumping him out at Cortez. Well, I've learned my lesson. Never follow fake gods. The body of you compels me. Mm. <laughs> oh, yep, he thinks these guys are gods now. Man, anyone with a horse can start religion to this dude. Just mm. as Tulio and Shell are about to take off, leaving Miguel behind. Just pinch my ass one more time. Fine, <laughs> you will forever be known as the man who lost this queen. Friends never say... Nope, absolutely nothing. <laughs> By the way, when they wanted to make this film more family friendly, they reportedly had to draw Chell a lot less sexy. Huh? How the hell did she look before if this was the less sexy version? Really? Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. But it looks like the priest is leading Cortez to the city, so they have to find a way to block off the entrance. Ironically, I don't think she would have been that sexy if that were the case. Boobs are too big. I got a preference. Uh, what do you? What do you? What do you? What do you what, Ooh, baby, that's what I like. Yeah. Or as Miguel calls it, the chell. But um. Mm. They're breaking too fast. They're not gonna make it. Why don't we use that magic shit from earlier? Was there really only one guy who knew that magic shit from earlier? If it was I saw a, a fraction of that magic shit from earlier, I teach like a million people that magic shit from earlier. He's a priest. They tried to destroy the pillars to block it off. Of course, resulting in Miguel helping out and all the gold being left behind. Oh. Get off the boat, Miguel, or you'll never see the city again. You don't think I'm gonna let you have all the fun, do you? I just discovered where an armadillo is, and I have plans for us. That's right. Miguel is here to be the climax in this anti. Hi, Climax. As we get an action scene, there's some pretty good water animation for the time. I guess they had plenty of practice. Mm, but yeah. it's basically over before it starts. The entrance vanishes, and Cortez gives up pretty quickly on the whole quest for El Dorado thing. Yeah. There is no El Dorado here. Onward, men. I will search to the ends of the earth, but it's Thursday, practically Friday. Let's just margarita and chick flicks. We end on another huge laugh. Yeah, yeah funny. And mm. the movie finally wraps up. So, Fine. what's the final verdict? Fine. Well, it's hard to say it's a bad movie. It's not. Indeed! It's just harder to say it's a good movie. I expected that. Fuck off. I a good want movie. to get into this film. I want to be on board with the following it has because there is a lot to admire. The animation is stunning. The mm -hmm. premise is inventive enough. The cast is good. The songs are memorable. It just falls short in the charm and humor category. Which is a big problem when you're trying to do a comedy adventure. But like I said, when the jokes don't work, they're not awful or annoying. I can think of a lot of comedies that I would hate to rewatch, and this isn't one of them. But it is slow and awkward. The film is like a less offensive A Crazy Nights. Nice. Beautiful drawing style. Oh, come that on, might don't put those in the same league. Too good. It needs to be zanier, it needs to be faster, it needs to be riskier. If you want a movie that had a similar production history but achieved bigger laughs, I'd check out The Emperor's New Groove. Uh, that also started out as a drama and transitioned into a comedy, but good god, it went all the way with it. And okay, I'm not gonna pretend that's like a perfect movie either, but it's man, not. imagine that style with this story. Yeah. Can't you just see it working better? Can't you see these lines and that slapstick really getting some belly laughs if there was a lot more energy and fast eh. timing? As is, though, I still respect what's trying to do, be a swashbuckling adventure with some good laughs. But when something starts off as a fourth wall breaking comedy, <laughs> then an adult drama, then a family friendly adventure, yeah. it's not surprising we got what we got. But with that said, it is kind of impressive yeah. we got what we got. This film could have been a disaster, and it's definitely not bad. Mm -hmm. There's much to admire in it, and like I said, if I was a kid who didn't grow up with these tropes yet, I'd probably love it and have a soft spot for it as an adult too. Yeah. But because I didn't, I see it as an awkward, but still noble, attempt at a comedic adventure. <laughs> Any more? Oh, fine, I guess we can let that slide. Yes, but God help you if you say anything good, bad, bad about this movie in the future! Sorry, Hyper. I guess we don't get into these movies as much as you do. It's okay. I'm paying you either way. That's a good point. Ooh. You're not paying me! No, you're my husband. Yeah, exactly! Be married to you as a cheap! I'm a nostalgia critic, guy. Remember? So you don't have... <laughs> it's tough to be a god! Yeah, that's gonna be stuck in my head. I'm 90% sure.
Anyway, uh, yeah, this is a good review. I know I argued a lot with Doug in that, and I was like, what? And even still, I, I kind of agree with, you know, all, all the reactions. Everybody was like, piss, and I get it. I, I mean, I get it. The movie's not perfect, and it's not supposed to be. You know, it's a beautiful movie with beautiful animation. And like I said, it probably shouldn't have followed up Prince of because I feel like... I have the same uh, reaction. Shit. I feel like I have the same reaction that everybody had when Hunchback of Notre Dame came out. Hunchback of Notre Dame is, is again, it's my third favorite Disney movie, ironically. And um, everybody was like, wow, this movie's so disappointing, and this and that and the other. And I'm like, I'm sorry? And. I know even Doug has said that like that was probably because of Lion King. Lion King, that it was so big and grandiose. And I'm like, yeah, but Pocahontas came out a little while before. I mean, but I, I guess everybody kind of watched that movie too. For some reason, that movie was a hit, even though everybody kind of hates on it now. Semi hates on it. I like it, but it's not accurate at all. I'll say that right now. Pocahontas is not accurate at all. Uh, but yeah, I feel like everybody had... Uh, that same reaction to Hunchback in Notre Dame because of the fact that, you know, they, they just found it underwhelming when compared to Lion King. And I'm like, that, that doesn't that doesn't apply. They're different movies and all Disney movies are the same. But, you know, at least I, I, I guess I felt that way with this movie. I wanted this to be more comparable to Prince of Egypt because Prince of Egypt was an amazing movie. And I still love it to this day, as I've said. But, uh, you know... I, like I said, I've softened to it, but I also can agree with some, some of the things that Doug has said. Most of the time, he, I, I think it was unfounded. You think he was just being a hater. But uh, tell me what you think in the uh, comments below. And remember, please, smash that like button if you want to see more sexy and nerdy content. And subscribe if you think I deserve it. And I'll see you on the next video. God, that show.